Good. Bad. I'm the guy with a gun. And welcome back to the Rancor Pit. Now, first of all, yeah, I had a bit of a hiatus. The, the holidays are not very kind to your, your friendly DM here. I had uh, severe sickness on Christmas Day. You don't want to hear about that. I failed my, my, my fortitude save. Never mind that. Um, and yes, I'm well aware I look like a scruffy nerve herder, but that's for a different reason altogether. So, last time that I talked to you guys was a fair bit ago, but I do remember that I specifically said that I had switched over to White Wolf for the explicit purpose of telling you about some of my bigger, more well-known uh, characters that I had made through uh, the D10 system. Last time I talked about Johnny Thunderpaws also, the singular most character that is closest to my heart. He was, he was a part of my being. I'm having a drink. Uh, he was closest to my being whenever I created him, and I... Uh, I played him for a good long number of years. But in fact, I became very well known for playing John. And uh, he spanned from online to the unmods all the way to one-on-one um, -on -one play. So, it's been around. Uh, I want to now talk to you what you guys would call the, uh, the psychopaths, the, the anarchists. The crazies of the World of Darkness world. Um, Ratkin, they're not overly difficult to understand. However, there is a wide playability range to any character you make as a Ratkin. And I had to, I had to get the book because whenever I originally saw it, it was my old ST, my old storyteller. He had the book and I was just constantly like, looking through it, and this, that, and the other, just combing through it every time I got a chance to, I had to own it, because I didn't, I didn't fully understand the, the in-depthness, in-depthness, any the word, the, the in-depth quality of, of what Rackin actually are. They're not all grenade-toting, automatic weapon-carrying, uh, building, exploding psychopaths. A lot of them are, but not all of them, and uh, I had to really study the aspects of, of Ratkin as a whole. And what it meant to be a Ratkin. Um, to give you a brief, really brief summary before I go into my character. Um, in the World of Darkness, more specifically the Werewolf the Apocalypse universe. Uh, whenever Gaia created the shapeshifters that she did, she gave them all specific jobs. They all had to take care of certain things. Um, werewolves, Guru, were given the specific job to guard Mother, guard Gaia, guard the Earth... And to take care of her, her, her little monkeys, us, humans, normal people. And after everything that happened, the, the Imperium, or the War of Rage, is, you may, may know it differently. And um, there's my Rancor. And um, everything else that the group have all been a part of. Guy took another look at things and said, well maybe it was too much for you you werewolf to deal with so i'm going to make something that's going to help you help you cull the um the high corruption and the worm base and the evilness and the darkness that has uh joined in with the weaver the cal the calcification the the stagnation um to to cut some of those strands to end some of that evil and to do so in a manner that you yourself either find distasteful or personally or have an argument with, you know. So she created Ratkin to do the dirty work. And boy, do they ever do the dirty work. Um, my biggest Ratkin character by far has got to be the uh, warrior, or also known as a blade slave um, aspect that I made. He was a Metis, means he was half-breed. He was the product of two Trueborn, well, not Trueborn, there are no real Trueborn Ratkin. Uh, to become a Ratkin, unlike any other shape-shifting breed, you are bitten and then infected with a type of lycanthropy. You have to go through horrible, agonizing pain uh, through Rite of the Birthing Plague in order to become a, a Ratkin. Um, it's not, they're not born. So, um, in my guy's case, his name was Kenner Dakota. And it's pretty innocuous sounding. But the way I made him was, first of all, I think he's my only real notable character that I gave the short flaw to. 
if it's in the book, it's in the core werewolf book, you take short, you are like no higher than like four and a half feet, I think, and you are short, you are almost, you know, standard issue dwarf, and there's good things that come with that and bad things that come with that. Uh, a lot of it's still social stigma, so not only is he a menace, um, he's also short, uh, which means he can't really be taken seriously all the time. And I did make his natural connection to his blade or his weapon of choice very symbolic. Um, I honestly don't know where I got the idea of going with what I did. Uh, and I did catch a bit of flack for it online. But the flack didn't last. You know, I thought, well, maybe this is kind of a bad idea. I could have done better. I could have chose something else. Because warriors are blade slaves. They supernaturally bond with their weapon of choice. Uh, it's usually blades of some kind or a weapon of, of, of the same caliber. And that particular weapon can then, because it's bonded to them, be used in a very, very special and specific way. They usually end up binding a pain spirit into it, for the most part, or, or sometimes it's a night spirit. And that allows that weapon to become a very special uh, and meaningful personal fetish to them. And a lot of people that would normally play Ratkin, there wasn't a whole lot on the, the unmods, which was kind of nice for me. But they usually choose like butcher knives, um, meat cleavers, machetes. It is the world of darkness, so you had the occasional katana. Um, you know, things like that. I, I don't, I don't, I can't really pinpoint why I chose what I did for him. But his deed name, the name he spiritually goes by, is Knows What Scares You. And he dealt a lot with fear. And I specifically gave him, much like John, a room to his own, unto his own, that it was an alleyway in one of the worst parts of Central City Necropolis. And in that alleyway, it bordered on a lawyer's office and bar on that end. And on the other end, I think it was Waste Management, if I remember right. And again, because this was the Unmod, you could create this and run it however you wanted it to. And I had a fair number of people who wanted to play with Kenner, too. And it was because he was such a unique character. Uh, he had a unique attitude towards everything. Uh, anyway, his his blade, his blade of choice, his weapon uh, that he bound a pain spirit into, which means uh, whenever you got hit with it, all of the negatives that you would suffer for your health levels are actually doubled. I know that doesn't mean too much to any non-White Wolf players, but whenever you have, you know, this particular attribute and this particular ability, you take that many dice and D10s, grab them together, that makes your dice pool, right? So let's say your average dice pool is, if you're really good at something, six. Three from something, three from something, six, right? Well, that's great. Except if you're already injured, and you're suffering a negative to that pool, say it's negative two. Well, if Kenner hits you with that pain dagger, now it's negative four. So you've gone from six dice to two dice to accomplish something. Fairly mean. And by the time you get to about, like, middle of the road, like for being injured, um, you're upwards of being down like six, eight dice. And if that takes up your pool, you're down to one dice. You can you always have to have one dice to roll, right? Um, it takes up your pool. It takes up your pool. It's no big deal. So for the bigger pools, like you know, some guys do like, you know, dexterity five, firearms, right? But that's ten dice, five and five, bam, ten. But if they're really injured by that point and would have been down negative five, it's kind of psychotic to try to use that anyway in a dice pool. But now it's negative ten. Now you got nothing but a die left. Um, what I gave him, I digress. What I gave him. Again, I'm trying to defend myself for my choice as if I'm, I'm fixing to be, you know, hit with a lot of criticism. What I gave him was a, a movie prop. More specifically, a Freddy Krueger bladed glove movie prop. Now, the reason I caught flack for it was because a lot of said, people said, Oh, well, you've got four blades and you can only bond to one of them and you, you can't do that. I was like... It's all for aesthetic and fluff purposes. You know, give me a break. I didn't want to make some guy with like a meat cleaver running around an alleyway. It would have been funny, you know, a butterfly knife, meat cleaver, kitchen knife, machete. You've got a katana over there, you know. 
I didn't want to do that. And since I chose the Dean name Knows What Scares You, he was all about fear. He knew how to get into people's skin because I played Kenner so aggressively. He would say the wrong things, or rather in his mind, the right things, at the complete wrong time. And he knew how to rattle people. And once you had, he had you rattled, that was it. He just basically crawled inside of your head. It can pretty much manipulate you to do whatever he wanted to. Um, frequently, I had guys come in there that either knew about me or knew about Kenner's, you know, well-deserved bad reputation and would go to pick a fight with him. Well, I'm all for it. Never once did I ever say if, if guys in character wanted to get into a fight or whatever and wanted to take on one of my characters, never did I say, you know, in little brackets for out of character, no PK, no player kill. I never said that. Never once. If I was going to get into a, a scrap with somebody in character with real rolling on a, thankfully, a communal dice roller we could all see, right? I never once guarded any of my characters. John got into plenty of fights. John took on a demon by himself and saved a girl from sacrifice out in the forest. Um, Kenner, one of his most notable fights is he got into a fight with a Bali, a demon-worshipping vampire. Now, you're not going to tell the other guy how to play his character, right? A guy comes along playing something that esoteric you assume he's going to know how to deal with it what to do with a character like that he ran it now granted in Kenner's case in that fight if I do remember correctly he did have to rage recover and what that is is shifters because they have the the uh, lunar or moon given ability of rage um, to allow them to act faster to allow them, allow them to uh empower some of their gifts, allow them to have extra actions. Um, I do remember that Kenner fell, and I said, okay, let me do Rage Recovery. And I rolled it, and I got him back to being healthy, and he got one more hit off, and that that demon was, that Bali, he was history. He was dead. Well, he was already dead, but I got one more hit in, and I ended up destroying him, and the guy, oh, well, I didn't want to do PK, and I'm like, okay, fine, dude. This was This was not a closed room. This was an open room. This is all out of character, too. As I typing, you didn't say it, but here's my dice roll. You can play me see on the roller. Killed your character. Not even sorry. You you always had me dead. <sighs> sorry. And anyway, uh, after I took um, Kenner off the unmods, because I played him a long time on the unmods. Uh, not quite as long as John. Um, but uh, I did play him quite a lot on the on the unmods, when I, especially when I was having like a bad day. And I, I just wanted to be, you know, grumpy or cranky or just pissed off. Uh, I'd go fire up <laughs> Kenner's, uh, Kenner's login. Uh, he also got some detractors, too. Not because of the fact that he was short. Not because of the fact that he used basically a Freddy glove. Um, he just sometimes was not liked by certain people. <laughs> uh, in and out of character, too. A lot of the people uh, that didn't like him. And I, I don't mean a lot of the people. But a lot of the people that didn't like him out of character were just because they didn't like my concept. Oh well. Um, Kenner uh, only had really one friend in his existence because because he was medicine, because he was not back in the colony looking after all the young ones, the younglings, the ratlings, you know. Because that's what medicine are supposed to do. They're supposed to be basically brood carriers. They're supposed to be just looking after the kids that are going to grow up. Um, he didn't do that. He defied the elders. And that's why he would never be able to rise above rank three. It's almost like they cursed him. Not in the real sense, just in a sense of we'll never recognize any of your renown no matter what you do from Mother Rat or Father City. Uh, so he was always stuck at rank three. And uh, he only really had one friend in the whole world because of that. And it was a kinfolk. I spoke about kinfolk before, but a rat, a rat, ratus, ratus. We wasn't black, but. Uh, he had one friend, and that, that was the rat that inhabited the apartment that Kenner slept in. The abandoned, like, you know, slum flophouse apartment. Um, he called him Mr. Bobley. And this particular rat kinfolk was rather intelligent. Uh, I took, like, a, a visual cue from uh, one of the aspects in the books called the Engineers. And they are, they're not hyper-intelligent, but that's what they're built for, right? 
Um, I didn't I didn't make him do any of this. I'll even show you. But Mr. Bobbly did wear little glasses. And Mr. Bobbly was a seal point. He was dusty dusty white with little like black marks in his ears. And Kenner kept him as a friend forever. Uh, and Kenner, I did give Kenner, if I remember right, I did give him Colony too. So he had a whole building, a whole apartment building full of rats that he kept as basically informants and spies. And he always watched that law office and he always watched that bar and he always watched that waste management facility. I think that's why when I wrote it into his backstory that he couldn't rise above rank three, I think that's why I had the elders not force him back into the colony because he frequently did things that fell under the three renown uh, sub points for Ratkin. He always took care of business. He always severed the worm when it got too thick. He always um, uh, clipped the strings of the weaver whenever they went to get a calcify. He was always about that. So that's kind of why I think I wrote him like to be a singular, like, like loner almost. And then when I took him off the chats, I frequently used him in off chat games. Um, a few on Yahoo, a few on MSN Messenger way back in the day when everybody used MSN Messenger. Um, and he actually got mixed up with one of my Vampire Chronicles as a crossover. And that was a lot of fun because he dealt like directly with the Prince of the City. So since we still all use Necropolis from the unmods into our own games offline, uh, well, off the chat anyway, uh, it was kind of funny for a vampire prince to have heard about about Kenner Dakota and uh, his exploits and what he can and can't do. And uh, yeah, it was it was kind of cool doing that. But uh, Kenner was always my favorite rack. And I had a couple of others. They didn't really... I didn't really bond with them as much as I did Kenner for some reason. And I had one rat kin, kinfolk. He was, he was a human. I don't want to play a rat. He was a human. He was a really like troubled, like early twenties guy, uh, that, uh, had a, had a thing for like going around picking fights with people he knew who were corrupt. Uh, it just, it didn't, it just didn't stick. Um, to get an actual like full ratkin game, it's, it's a little difficult. It's a lot more difficult than it would be for Guru because a Guru is a nod and a wink and then you have an entire, you know, pack, uh, Garal is it's a bit difficult too. So is Mokle, Were Dragons, and and I'll talk about uh, them next, I think. But Ratkin, I think, is about as hard as Rokea, which are Were Sharks. It's difficult. It's doable, but you have to have people that are really interested in wanting to play all of these uh, these changing breeds, these Farah or Beta, as they're called. And I I thoroughly enjoyed Garal. That's still my favorite. Um, Ratkin, Mokle, Rokea, those are my three next. They're so awesome. Um, Bastet, I didn't latch on a Bastet all that much. Um, Eric, who I think, I think I may actually talk about him next. Eric was a kinfolk of mine, but he wasn't, he's not what you think. Uh, Bastet as a whole for being trueborn, I just didn't play that much. And, uh, Nuisha, where coyotes? I didn't, again, I, I had a couple, but they just didn't, they didn't run as well uh, without a full, like, party of them. Ananazi, were spiders, I never got into Naga. You, you have to play with three other, like, two other people to make a a, a set, a nest, an, uh, an Ananaz is what it's called. No, that's an Ananazi, no, it's called something else for Naga. Um you have to play with three people because that's how they roll. That's how they run. But uh, anyway, um, I've rambled quite enough for this video. Uh, next time, I think I am going to talk about Eric Irons. And he has to have the longest running in-depth character storyline I've ever had of anything. And even more so than John. Because there for a while, I actually put John away into my NPC chest. And I used Eric online on the Unmods. Open rooms closed rooms, uh, closed storylines, and I used them on all both messengers I had, and I've used them tabletop. Eric, Eric is a mess. So we'll talk about him next time, and I'm sorry about the gap for the videos, but life happens. So until next time, grab your dice and roll initiative.